Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. I'm Daniel King, and I'm excited about telling people about Jesus. Today I have a very special guest with me, Gola from Indonesia. Thank Good you. to thank you for be having with me. you. Yeah, thank you for now, having me. Now, you were actually born in Ethiopia. That's right. And then you came to Canada, became a Canadian citizen right. at a young age. Right. And now you are living in Indonesia. Kind of tell me about that journey. How did you end up here? Well, um, yes, I, I was born in Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia. Um, from a young age, my family has always traveled, uh, mainly for my father's uh, work. And uh, so um, we uh, ended up in India uh, for a couple of years. Uh, I was about 10 years uh, old at the time. And uh, soon after, two years after that, um, my family decided to move to Canada. Uh, mainly for uh, uh, education um, and uh, I just completed grade 8 at the time and uh, uh, I arrived in, in uh, Montreal, Canada and had to learn French uh, so I can continue with my grade 9. So I did grade 9 in French and uh, grade 10, 11, 12 uh, and f finished uh, in Ontario so my family is in uh, Ottawa, the capital of Canada, and that's where uh, I, I spent most of my time. And, um, and let's talk about Indonesia. Right. How did you end up coming here to the nation of Indonesia? Well, um, it started uh, during my high school years. Um, the Lord uh, started speaking to me through many different ways. Um, uh, through people would you know would point me out of a crowd and start to prophesy over me going to these places preaching to thousands of people and that that's uh, <laughs> that used to scare me actually when I used to get those kind of words uh, and then the Lord would speak to me through dreams and visions and I would see myself in front of Asians people uh, doing ministry and uh, so it, it was a process uh, for the Lord to kind of uh, help me along. Uh, I did have a desire for missions, but at the same time, I also had this fear in me of like going so far from, from family. Indonesia is quite far from, from Canada. <laughs> it's literally the other side of the world. Uh, so uh, I remember when I made the decision to go to Indonesia, um, not, uh, my family was not for it, the um, uh, majority of my family. And uh, even I was a little bit uh, not sure what was going to happen. I wanted to go to Ethiopia to do missions, and, but I ended up coming to in Indonesia in 2004 through a Bible school uh, that I went to in Canada, in St. Catharines area near Niagara Falls, and uh, uh, ended up here in October 2004, about 20 years ago now. And uh, Within uh, a, a few months, I loved Indonesia. It's just the, uh, the everything uh, turned out to be totally different than <laughs> what it was in my mind and ended up staying here and doing... Now, you work. met your wife, Esther, yeah. here in yeah. Indonesia. She's right. Indonesian. Yeah. And uh, how long have you been married now? We've been married for 14 years. And your son, Benjamin, yes, um, is uh, 10 years old. He's 10 years old, right. And yeah. so... How did God bring you and your wife, Esther, together? Well, we met in a church, um, the church that we, uh, my team was working uh, with uh, when we first came to Indonesia. And, um, and she was also involved in her church. She was a full-time ministry in the church. And so um, we always bumped into each other. And uh, she was also one of the translators for guests uh, that come to speak. So uh, she <coughs> translated for me a couple of times, and that's how we met. And uh, uh, six years later, we got married. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And tell me a little bit about your, your wife's journey. How did she become a believer? Well, um, my wife, Esther, is from a Buddhist uh, background. Um, and uh, she was saved during a Christmas service uh, in her church. Um, <coughs> somebody invited her. And, um, and it, it was a long process for her also, but she made a decision. Uh, uh, to, uh, to be a believer in her teens also, during her teens. And, um, and then she joined the church, and she's been working in that church since, uh, and then that's, that's where we ended up meeting. <laughs> yeah. Indonesia yeah. is a very unique nation, right. 270 million people. Right. 
it's the fourth largest nation in the world by population. Yes. And it's the largest Muslim majority nation That's on right. earth, That's even right. bigger than Pakistan or Saudi Arabia. When right. people think of Muslim nations, they, they often think of that part of the world. Right. But Indonesia actually has more Muslims than, than any other nation. Right. And it's a nation of islands, over 17,000 different islands. That's right. And so your ministry here, you've gone to many different islands right. to talk about Jesus. Yes. Um, so we do uh, uh, a few things here in Indonesia. Um, um, we uh, do crusades. We call them festivals, uh, festival of love. Or, um, and uh, we, we've done those uh, different parts of Indonesia. Um, they, they are set up to reach uh, people outside the church um, in a very friendly way. Um, and uh, we just focus uh, on preaching the gospel, very simple, and uh, pray for the sick and, and uh, expect miracles uh, to happen in these events. Uh, we've seen wonderful things that, uh, that God has done, um, miracles uh, such as you know, deaf ears opening, and, uh, you know, people that couldn't walk and uh, being able to walk, and that that brings uh, a great uh, awareness of the gospel in an area. Uh, and uh, we have had Christians and non-Christians come to our events uh, and to uh, to hear the gospel and to experience miracles. And uh, so, a lot of what I've been doing uh, is, is sowing seeds into areas, uh, unreached areas. Um, I love to go to unreached tribes, that's another thing uh, that we are doing in Indonesia. The, uh, currently, actually, we're in the process of uh, researching about 40 uh, unreached tribes. And uh, we're also formulating a strategy uh, through partners, to friends here, and uh, also overseas to reach these tribes. And uh, um, so I spend uh, a lot of my time uh, in, in doing these uh, crusades in villages and small towns and also uh, working with these tribes. Uh, we also have a, a, a discipleship ministry that we are doing um, on a weekly basis in our hometown in Sumatra and, uh, and also through our pastor seminars uh, we encourage local believers uh, to go out and evangelize. Yeah. And so this is real cutting-edge ministry because you're going into tribes that may have zero believers right. in the entire tribe. Exactly. And you're getting to know them, asking yeah. questions. Yes. And it's actually very valuable research yeah. so that people can know where the most need is. Right, right. So um, that's my hope, uh, number one, to create an awareness um, about these tribes. Most of them are very small, uh, maybe like a couple of thousand people. Um, in, a, in a few villages, um, so uh, uh, they're kind of hard to reach. Sometimes it takes days, and you have to, uh, you know, get on a boat and then get on a motorcycle, go trek into the jungle, and then. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, it's work that needs to be done, uh, and um, you know, my my heart is eventually um, to train uh, local missionaries uh, that will go there and uh, be, uh, be a witness to them uh, in some form. And we are in the process of doing that. And, uh, and also, um, we hope uh, it will create an awareness so that maybe there will be other people for, that will send missionaries there eventually and, uh, so that uh, the gospel can reach to each and every person. Yeah. Now, in, in the Bible, it says that every tribe in language, every ethnic group will yeah. be re represented before the throne room in heaven. Right. And so that's why this type of ministry is yeah. so important right. because if they're going to be in heaven, they need to hear the gospel. Right. And if uh, they, we don't know who has heard the gospel, who hasn't heard the gospel, we, we need to, yes. to ask questions to find out who are the people right. that we're missing, that we right. want to take to heaven with That's us. That's true. That's true. And, you know, sometimes um, you got to go there to, to see what's happening, um, especially these areas where there's no believers, there's no churches. Um, 
somebody needs to be there and um, live among the people and have some kind of a gospel representation. Um, you may not be able to, you know, preach the gospel right away, but just having someone there uh, will create opportunities for, for the gospel to, to be heard. Uh, and uh, and my, my heart is, you know, these, especially these tribes that are like completely 100% non-believers, at least we'll get one or two families and then it will start to kind of snowball from there. And uh, the, the best thing I have found uh, in my experience is, um, uh, you know, Indonesians, reaching Indonesians is way more effective than, the, the, you know, us coming, like for example, me coming from Canada. Um, and um, they know the culture and they also know, the, you know, the, the how to talk to these people. and. Um, uh, that's my heart right now is to raise local people and um, to motivate uh, uh, local believers to be missionaries. And so one of your desires is even to start a, a training school that's, that's right. for people yeah. that would from Indonesia come to be trained right. in how to, to reach right. different people groups. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, in Indonesia, um, the, the work of the evangelist and, and the missionaries kind of like always the last thing on people's thoughts. Um, many believers, um, you know, that want to go into ministry want to be pastors, which is great, uh, but uh, it's mostly done in Christian areas. Um, so there's a lot of church planting happening, but in Christian areas. Uh, and um, uh, it's kind of hard for missionaries to, to go to these places um, because, um, uh, number one, they don't know what to do. Um, and they stick out. They stick out. Uh, there's also, of course, the financial thing. Uh, uh, so, so we are trying to uh, encourage and motivate people to to uh, to work in these kind of remote areas. And um, I, I, by God's grace, we are finding people that have a heart for that, and we are already starting to partner with local uh, people to to reach some of these tribes I'm visiting now. Yeah. Yeah. Last night we were eating dinner with a local evangelist and right. and uh, the, there was one woman there who said she just came back from a village she lived there yeah. for three days yeah. and 35 people she was having Bible studies with them and right. and very primitive and then she's sleeping on the floor right. and yeah. uh, no electricity yeah. no plumbing yeah. so it's it's difficult ministry but it's yeah. extremely valuable yeah, very much yeah. now several times you've mentioned the gospel preaching the simple gospel, yeah. um, and, and you've seen God work through that. Give me the gospel in a nutshell. What is the gospel that you preach? Well, the gospel is, um, uh, is, is the good news of um, what God has done for us uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's actually the finished work of what uh, Jesus has accomplished uh, through his death, through his life, his uh, death, resurrection. And um, it, it, it's, it's the story of how God redeemed mankind. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a simple but powerful story. Uh, and, um, and we just uh, uh, focus uh, in our events to, uh, we don't so much talk about religious stuff. Uh, uh, we don't compare religions. We don't do any of that. We just simply speak about what Jesus has done for all, for all people. And, um, and we encourage people also uh, to uh, experience this gospel. It's not, it's not the gospel of just words, but it's an action, it's in power. Uh, so I, I love uh, the book of Acts and some of the things that you know, the disciples did. And uh, so uh, what we try to do is uh, in our events, uh, for we, we help people to experience how good God is through miracles. And, uh, uh, so uh, there's a scripture that says, come, taste, and see how good the Lord is, right? So let people have a taste of, you know, how, how good our God is and, and what he has done for us and how powerful it is. Uh, and especially, um, you know, we always have uh, 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 miracle testimonies that we try to uh, bring up, you know, interview people during our events and so that people will see that God is actually doing something. This is not just a story uh, from 2,000 years back, but this is happening now. And um, 
that brings an impact to a village or a small town or even the churches in that area, it would encourage them to, to believe and uh, to, to continue to do the work that way. So right now we are in the city of Kupang, right. and tonight yeah. the gospel festival begins. Right. Uh, we went by to look at it last night, and it's this beautiful plaza area right next to the ocean. Right. And That's there were nice. lots of vendors out there selling food, even before the festival begins. There's lots of yeah. people there, lots of kids running around. They had yeah. games and, and toys for the kids. And so how, what are you expecting to see God do? here in Kupang this week? Well, um, I believe there, there is going to be, um, you know, th uh, through what is going to happen, people are going to have a clear representation of what the gospel is. And uh, I be I'm believing for miracles. I'm believing for uh, people to experience miracles that will lead to uh, them uh, opening their hearts to the gospel. So. Um, we, we've had uh, events where you know deaf ears have opened people deaf from birth and things like that and that that causes people to attention uh, to, uh, to you know to put their attention to the gospel it's kind of like the story of uh, when Philip went to Samaria and preached the gospel and says when the people saw the miracles they put uh, attention to his words um, and that's that's what I'm expecting that there will be um, a moment where people will realize, okay, this is real, Jesus is real, right? And what is my response to this? And um, so by the, by the end of uh, those three nights, uh, I, um, my prayer is that people will, uh, you know, uh, realize, okay, this is not just religion, this is not, this is actually happening now, and, and I need to respond to this. Yes. Now, one of the things as an evangelist, yeah. I think we're called to do is to challenge the church as a whole right. to focus on evangelism. Right. What response have you seen from the churches here mm -hmm. in Indonesia? Um, do they have a heart to, to reach out to the lost? How, how are you encouraging them right. to, to focus on, on people who are lost? Well, it's, it's, it's a mixed response, right? So. Um, it, it, it's a challenge sometimes uh, working uh, uh, with uh, believers uh, because of uh, some history of maybe uh, things that have happened in the past uh, and uh, there's a little bit of fear, hesitation um, to do evangelism. So most, uh, uh, most believers tend to just stick to their group, uh, or to their churches or to their communities. Um, there, there is a few tribes in Indonesia that were reached by uh, missionaries like 150 years ago. So they're mainly uh, Christian. So most of the believers in Indonesia are from these few tribes um, that are. But there's religious. many tribes here. There's many tribes, and it's uh, from the 270 million, um, maybe 20, 15 to 20 percent is Christian. Right, so the rest of them are still yet to be reached. So, uh, so it's hard uh, for uh, uh, believers at times because of maybe the fear or they don't know what to do uh, or how to approach uh, other non-believers. So, uh, our festivals actually, in a way, help that to to show them, okay, this is how you do it, uh, or let's do it together, and kind of helps uh, build confidence in them to go out and and do more outreaches. Um, so really our festivals have always been uh, done in partnership with local churches uh, and that helps also to bring in enthusiasm and you know especially when, when they see when the Christians see the miracles also there's there's something that happens here wait this this we can do this too right we can also preach the gospel so that's what we hope will happen also through uh, through these events that it will revive the church and inspire the church to do evangelism in that area. Yeah. Well, it's absolutely amazing yeah. the, the work that you and your wife Esther are doing here in Indonesia. Yeah. Um, if you're listening and you have a heart for Indonesia, I'd encourage you to get connected with yes. GOLA. Yes. 
Um, if someone would like to support you or th th their church would like to yeah. adopt you as one of their missionaries, yeah. well, what's your website? How can they find out more information about you? Uh, we do have a website. Uh, uh, our ministry is a registered charity in Canada. Uh, it's called Global Good News Initiative. Uh, uh, the website is ggni.org, ggni.org, and uh, uh, you can go there and find all the information you need. Uh, and, uh, you can be a partner through uh, our charity in Canada. Yeah. And are there opportunities for people to come to Indonesia to, to do evangelism or to, to work with you? Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, we always welcome uh, people that, that have a heart uh, for Indonesia. And, uh, and uh, we, we can do what we can uh, uh, and what, what is uh, uh, possible for, for us to do so that uh, we can open doors also for people. So uh, I've worked with uh, different ministries in the past, and uh, uh, we've had, uh, yeah, we have a good experience also partnering with people, yeah. That's awesome. Well, let's finish by praying for Indonesia. Yes. Um, but instead of praying in English, can you you'll pray in uh, Indonesian? <laughs> and, and let's just pray for God to bless this okay. nation. Okay, let's do that. All right. Hallelujah. Tuhan, terima kasih uh, untuk hari ini, untuk uh, tempat ini di Kupang. Terima kasih atas kemurahanmu, atas anugerah yang engkau sediakan bagi semua kita. Terima kasih untuk negara ini, negara Indonesia yang Tuhan cintai, yang Tuhan kasih. Terima kasih atas semua yang Tuhan sudah lakukan di hidup kita semua. Dan kita berdoa, sama-sama kami berdoa di sini. Biar Injil ini bisa sampai ke seluruh pulau-pulau Indonesia. Biar semua mendengar tentang kebaikan Tuhan, kebaikan Yesus yang sudah selesai. Pekerjaan Tuhan di atas kayu salib Supaya semua suku-suku bangsa Bisa mendengar dan bisa mengalami kebaikan Tuhan Terima kasih atas anugerahmu Atas panggilanmu Di dalam nama Yesus Amen Amen Well thank you Gola so much for being yes. on the Evangelism Podcast Yes, thank you for having me God bless you Thank you Daniel King is on a mission to save one million souls a year, but he can't do it alone. Would you consider sowing a financial seed today? To give, please visit www.kingministries.com.